to send my presentation to his laptop. And I said, no, because you guys are using Mac, and we are a PC maker. Okay? And um, uh, so I was sitting next to uh, um, Eric and Chris on the table, and they told me uh, they're going to prepare a whole list of questions. And actually, I saw Eric making two-page list of questions. So I will assure you, I'm, I'm going to use all my 30 minutes in my presentation, so leave no time for questions. <laughs> okay? um, and I was talking to Laurie Sullivan this morning, and she asked me, are you ready for this? Um, I said, yes, I'm going to spend half of my time talking about afternoon activities. Okay? <laughs> Actually, uh, I was really excited last night. I couldn't get to sleep because yesterday was the best golf game of my life for, for the past two years. Okay? I, I got two birdies and in 12 holes. But I got to blame the weather. If I finish 18 holes with that success rate of 17%, I can get another birdie out of it, okay? Um, okay, um, so enough being said, I wanted to uh, start my presentation by doing a short survey. So I hope you guys are not hungover enough to do the survey for me, okay? So first, how many of you have heard of Lenovo, the audience? Okay, pretty much, okay, 95%? Okay, how many of you have owned a Lenovo product um, this includes IBM ThinkPad. Okay, there, there's more, about half. That's great. Okay, for those who have raised your hand, how many of you have actually clicked into a paid search ad to get your laptop or PC product, or at least it's part of the decision-making process? Please. Oh my, okay, thank you so much. Actually. My expectation for this question is really low. Two reasons being that. First, actually, you know, a lot of people in the audience are executives and CEOs. You guys have no time to do this. And you are busy with work, uh, attending conferences, like Search Insider Summit. Okay, and, and I know your assistant doing that for you. And second reason, actually, everyone in this room is search savvy. And you know how hard search and the mar marketer works to get their efficiency down. So you don't want to risk clicking into my ad and bring down my efficiency. And I, I appreciate that. But think about this way. If everyone is as smart as us, Google is going to be in deep financial crisis. Okay? All right. So. With that, I'm going to talk today about how we build a SEM campaign using customer journey. I think Paul from Accenture has touched a lot of points on customer journey. So I really wanted to utilize this opportunity to talk about how we do that in Lenovo. So since this is a brand presentation, um, I want to start from the basics. So who we are. Lenovo is a 30 billion global personal technology company. And we have over 30,000 employees across the world. And we have, more than, uh, we have customers in more than 160 countries. So um, we're still a new company, but we have a long history stretching back to the founding PC industry back in 1981 by IBM. And also the uh, introductions of PCs uh, in China by Legend. So um, Legend is the old name for Lenovo. Um, we actually renamed to Lenovo in 2002. And the, I don't know if you guys know about how we get the name of Lenovo. So it's actually a combination of two words. So we take the first two letters from legend. And Novo actually is from Latin, means new. So we formed this new uh, brand name called Lenovo in 2002. Um, back then, I was still living in China. And uh, I saw a huge investment on TV commercials rebranding to this name. And the company we are today actually was formed eight years ago when Lenovo bought PC uh, but IBM PC business. So um, 
in 2005 or 09, sorry. So we, we reacquired Lenovo mobile business, so, uh, which was spun off originally. Um, this turn, turns out to be a very, very um, smart decision that drive Lenovo to the PC Plus strategy in the industry. And in 2011, we closed two acquisitions. So one is NEC in Japan, the other is uh, Medion in Germany. So both acquisitions have made Lenovo the uh, market leader in PC industry in those two uh, countries. Um, and last year, we also announced a uh, partnership and joint venture with EMC. We also bought a company called CCE in Brazil. And we also acquired Stoneware. Does anyone know, uh, know who, uh, who is Stoneware? What do they do? No? Okay, they are a cloud technology company. So that means we're also going to uh, cloud computing technology. So um, this is where we are in terms of computation. So we are number three in worldwide smart connected devices. This includes all four screen devices, PC, tablet, smartphones, and, t uh, uh, and TVs. And we are number two in global PC market. And we are number two in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And we are also number two in worldwide consumer PC. So we are number one PC maker in China, Germany, Russia, Japan, and India. We are also number one worldwide commercial PC maker. So this is where we are in terms of market share. Um, so as I said, we are number two worldwide. And we have actually had 13 straight amazing quarters that outpace any competitors out there in the market. Our market share has almost tripled since 2009. So with that all being said, how SEM contribute to this tremendous growth in this entire journey? So before getting into the tactics, I want to show you guys a quick video. So this is our, one of our new products called Lenovo Yoga, which launched, launched last year. And uh, we have got so many rewards out of it, and uh, it sells really, really well. And uh, the video you just saw actually is a cut version. If you're interested, there is an uncut version on YouTube. I think that's about four or five minutes long. Um, so with this in mind, and we have, this, we, we have had this whole worldwide launch for this product. And what I want to talk about is how paid search and other paid media really help with this product launch according to the customer journey and customer buying cycle. So first, this is how we define our media, media landscape. So on the very left, we have the paid media. That includes online paid media, 
and offline pay media. And um, the online pay media, we have differentiated so many different areas, affiliate, display, pay search, and comparison shopping engine. And we really utilize this paid media to drive activities to Lenovo-owned assets, which include Lenovo.com, SEO, and all other assets. And we, can, we wanted to provide a cohesive experience for customers. And once customers have a really positive experience with Lenovo, an earned asset actually will generate more tractions. So we get more clicks and conversions to the site. So this is what a traditional SEM campaign look like. So we get this new product, Yoga. Most of the time, we're going to build a campaign around it and we create ad groups, uh, several ad groups within this campaign. And we also uh, create a set of keywords and ad copies in each ad group. And then at the end, we're going to measure the conversions based on last click. So we all know there's a big flaw in doing that. Okay? So what we do in Lenovo, so we got this customer journey uh, set up. So we get the outside loop, which is the uh, new customer loop. So we really wanted to drive attention, interest, and desire. And within the loop, the inside loop, is existing customer. So how they enjoy the product, and if they are sharing with their friends, and how they become bonded with the brand. And these two loops actually overlap in the purchase stage. So with that in mind, so um, from my perspective, and from our paid media perspective, actually, we build something different. Um, so this is what we did. So basically, you all know that for pay search, it's not like display. You can do a lot of segmentation. But you can really, it's really hard to differentiate who your customers are. But you can actually do that by mapping out your keyboard portfolio using different set of keywords and categories to do that. So uh, for example, in the upper funnel, you can really utilize a lot of non-brand keywords, like laptop, PC, convertibles, and so on. And once people get down to the funnel, you want to drive them to more a product or brand associated keywords. And you want to use the same technique for your ad messaging and landing pages. Uh, and also, in terms of what kind of techniques you wanted to use, uh, there, there are a lot of things you need to think about. When is the best time to do a video search? And when you wanted to do a lot of product listing ads? And when do you want to do being rich ads? And all those need to take into consideration. And also, one of the most important part is metrics. You definitely don't want to look at the uh, uh, conversions for your upper funnel keywords. That's really, you know, you're going to get really poor result by doing that. And what are you going to show your executive team is they're going to get really disappointed. Okay? So um, what, what I found is you're going to use a combination of a set of KPIs. Um, you want to look at um, your bounce rate. You want to look at the time span on the page. You want to look at video completion. And you also want to look at uh, repeating customers versus first time visits. And of course, when people get down to the funnel, you want to measure the sales and the conversions. Um, so for most people who are doing pay search, once they get conversions and they know this is done, this is a, a done deal for the program. But it may be true for some industries, but it's definitely not done for PC industry. So we got a lot of things to do actually after people purchase, which means for our existing customers. So we build a similar um, type of tactics and strategy for that. So um, in terms of, you know, we really want to focus on accessories and reviews and how you can drive people to uh, really advocate on the brand and how they can uh, uh, add a Google Plus or write a review on your site. So I want to show you some examples I did. So, um, here are some of the examples for ad copies. Uh, on the upper funnel, we really want to focus on branding. So that's a branding purpose. So uh, more, uh, you know, different 
a call to actions, and we want to focus on the product features. And also, we want to focus on the usage of the product. Once people get down to the funnel, we want to show customers what are the benefits of the product, and what will be the discount, and what offer we can provide for them. And then after they purchase product, product how we can utilize different uh, tactics, strategies to provide you know, a family product, or accessories, or call to uh, you know, call customer center, how we do that. And here are some landing page examples we did. In the upper funnel, we want to drive them to the flash page, uh, splash page, sorry, and plus the video page. And when people get down to the funnel, we wanted to focus on the shop page plus the uh, uh, retailer shop link page. And after they become an existing customer, and we really wanted to drive them to uh, uh, the accessories and page review site so they can become bonded with the brand. So no matter what kind of uh, SEM campaign structure you come up with, I always wanted to stick to the basics of SEM, which I call it the RCS methodology. And R is relevancy. Search, we all know, is all about relevance. If you lose relevance, you get poor quality score, your CBC will go up, and your campaign efficiency come down. And one of the things I saw a lot of um, um, advertisers and agencies do is they take all the keywords there and put them all in broad match tab. So we all know uh, there, there's some bad result in, in doing that. So my, one of my methodology is really to silo all your impressions, but that's ideal situation, to exact match tab. But at least you want to silo at least 7, 70 to 85% of your impression share to exact match tab. And control is all about cost control and efficiency control. So it's really the key of SEM, and we know SEM tends to be the most efficient paid programs. And scalability. So people like me who manage thousands of campaigns, millions of keywords globally, if you don't know how to scale, you're going to work 24 hours nonstop. You know that. So you really want to scale from term to term, account to account, device to device, and even geo to geo and country to country. So since I'm talking about global pay search, I just want to touch, touch upon a little bit about global search engine landscape. Um, so this is a, a, a little bit older data from uh, uh, 2011. So Google is definitely the dominant force. I think Dave and Jennifer, you guys love to hear this. So. Uh, in average, Google has about 92% market share in more than 23 countries. But there are some exceptions. So in China, Russia, South Korea, Google's average market share is only about 19%. So who are the champs from local? In China, Baidu is the dominant force, which has almost 76% market share. I think this has uh, gotten worse when uh, Google's uh, relationship with Chinese government, so, you know, become worse. But uh, in Russia, Yandex has about 61% market share. Never in South Korea, they, they are about 65%. Google only has 10% market share in there. So you may ask, since we know how Google works, why do we care? So if you are a global search engine marketer, you want to do business in these countries, you really want to uh, explore what it looks like in local market. So in China, we know that China is the number one uh, why you use, I think, number one worldwide usage, and Russia is the number one web usage in Europe. And South Korea, amazingly, they're the number one mobile web usage worldwide. So there's some other stats in there. If you're interested, I can send this over. So um, I think as a search engine marketer, at one point, you, you always get asked by your executive team, 
Are we maxed out for brand terms? Are we maxed out for non-brand terms? How could we seek incremental opportunities? Okay, this is always a challenge, and you always get challenged by your executive team. So, my first step is, before doing that, you really wanted to have attribution models set up in place. Because that's where really you wanted to know how to invest your dollars. You don't really want to do that blindly. And you wanted to know every single touch point that PaySearch plays in the entire customer buying cycle. And second, I want to talk about some syndication network. Okay? So uh, I have been working with Ad Marketplace for about a year. So these guys have done a really good job on driving incremental opportunities. And the reason I choose them is because um, once we opt into Google search network, it's a black box. You don't really know what are the search partners individually, how individually they are performing. But Ad Marketplace can do that. So uh, actually right now, my, uh, um, my tra traffic percentage from Ad Marketplace in North America is about 7%. Well, Google and Bing has about 12%. So it's a really, really good source to have incremental opportunities from Ad Marketplace. And second is about um, email. You can do an email tactic for a cart abundant. So I know there, there are quite a few companies out there. That's another way you can drive incremental conversions. And third, as I mentioned, it's about local search engines. You really want to utilize the synergies between Google and all the other search engines or all the other networks. So um, for my last slide, I want to talk a little bit about computation. Um, don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about compete with your competitors. Actually, how we compete with our resellers and partners. This is more like put out fire from your backyard. This is really, I mean, we ha I have been talking with several people in, in this room, uh, including uh, Derek Tucker from uh, Corral, and we have been exchanging ideas. I think he is facing the same situation as well. I believe a lot of you guys do. Um, for them, because Lenovo is really a China-driven company, and we have a lot of retailers out there, and they do all these different kinds of tactics. They use PaySearch, they use Display, and what's even worse is that they get this kind of money from us. And they come back and bid on my uh, brand terms. <laughs> so uh, this is really, you know, what I was really pissed at. And then last year, um, from the data is from April to September, I believe. This is for my trademark terms. For about, you know, six months, my CPC and spend has been driven up by five times just because a few resellers start bidding on those terms. So what I did is I just call up a call on the uh, local GM and the channel manager, and we all set up cadence, actually, um, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. And I set up a set of governance around that. And they are willing to cooperate. And that's a good thing, because you want to tell them this is for the benefit of the entire company, okay? And then, um, you know, some of the simple rules you can really establish. You know, you can audit their keyword list or whatever you want to do, they cooperate. So I think I have seen tremendous, tremendous result by saving tens of money. So you can really invest on in doing something else, okay? Um, with that said, so that's um, my presentation for today. Thank you so much for listening. I don't think we have time for questions, right? <laughs> we have time for a couple if there is any. This, this group's been a little quiet these couple days, so I don't want to say we can give you questions and have a room full of people stare at me. And here we go, awesome. Hi, John Papp from Athena Health. Yeah. Uh, I guess my question for you, you said you had millions of keywords on the account. In terms of the, the structuring sweet spot for you guys, um, how many ad groups do you have? Uh, is, there, is there a definite strategy? Number of keywords per ad group, anything that you can share on that? Um, we don't have a um, really a sad strategy for how we create ad groups and keywords. Uh, but as I mentioned, so once we have a new product, 
or we have a launch. We really wanted to cope with this customer journey and how we differentiate keywords by each different step. And then we wanted to utilize the synergy of the ad copies. Uh, you know, we can use different call, call to actions. And then also for keywords, uh, one thing we can do, this is a best practice, is you, re you really wanted to have your keyword ad group as small as you can. And sometimes you wanted to uh, separate some of the keywords out in each individual ad group only has one keyword or one match tab. So you can really focus on that one keyword and to tailor ad copies and other stuff around it. Great, well thanks again. Oh, uh, before I done, I think per some people's request, Rob, if I can, I wanted to show you another um, new product video. I think some people really want to see this new product uh, we just announced last month. It's called Lenovo Horizon. I don't exactly. have the video on my laptop, so I have to play yeah, it well, on YouTube. Maybe we have a private session for you a little bit later on that. Oh, that's fine. That's yep. fine. Yep. Great. Well, All thanks right. again, Lehman. Thank you so much. So coming up next, uh, the panel is going to be Welcome to Social Search Engine Optimization and Search 3.0. And our moderator and panel here is sort of the equivalent at Media Post of a mega band. Um, so it's kind of exciting to have a bunch of rock stars up there. So while, you know, Eric, Jerry, Kevin, Grant, and Derek make their way up there, just a couple housekeeping announcements for you guys. There's still space left for this afternoon's activities. Thanks. Sailing, fishing, and golf. So Thank please sign up if you want to go. And if you've signed up yesterday,